And then we have phishing attacks. Um, and w this is part of the, uh, it's a subset of phishing uh, of social engineering. And phishing is still one of the most commonly used types of attacks. For the same reason that, uh, as we were speaking before, that the, the humans are in general the weakest link in the security chain because they are easily exploitable. For the same reason, phishing, because it's an attack not against the computer, but it's an attack against the uh, uh, people, it's against human beings, making them leak sensitive information, that's why it's still commonly used and actually is still very powerful. So phishing is still one of the most commonly used types of attacks. Likewise, it's based on people vulnerability. And in order to be successful across the years, it has changed its methods. So initially, it was it was using email as the predominant uh, spreading, let's say, uh, protocol. But then, as you know, the everybody pretty much everybody which, who got connected to the internet found out that hey, um, as as soon as you receive an email uh, looking from your which seems to be from your from your bank uh, from your bank asking for your username and password, don't be fool enough to provide those because that could be an attack. So what happened in here is that most of the banks have started uh, making, uh, deploying uh, mass mails or calling users, their, 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 their customers, to provide awareness and free training against these types of attacks via email. Because in the end, the user with a phishing attack being successful, in most cases, the user doesn't lose the money. It's just the bank that has to put the, put the money back in the user's account. So the bank is the one who is, in the end, the target, not the user. The user is just a relay to, of course, the user's money. But in the end, the bank is responsible for that attack based on the current regulations. So that's why the banks have started. They have realized that they 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 have they have realized they needed countermeasures to uh, be put in there to let the, their 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 customers know that when they receive such emails, they should take they should pay more attention to actually make sure that. That's actually an, an email which came in from uh, from the bank or not. In the jail, they also tell the, the users that hey, the, the bank doesn't send uh, such in, such emails asking for confidential information, which clearly makes sense, right? Even if you think about it, like why would a bank send you an email asking you for username and password for whatever reason? Because those are things that only you should know and nobody else. So as the email scam, you know, started losing its um, its penetration uh, a level, so users starting to be aware of such scams, then the attackers have moved on to what is called farming, which is based on uh, DNS ex ex exploiting. Which how this works is very simple. If you look at the user, let's say I am Christian in here. So that that makes use of DNA, of another of a DNS exploit of a DNS attack. So let's say I'm Christian connected to my PC in here. Doesn't matter if I'm at work at my home and I want to connect to my bank account, Christian. So my bank account website is let's say www.xyz.com. That is my bank. Uh, of course, a virtual one. And I'm gonna enter in the I'm going to open up a browser and type in that URL in order to get access to my bank account to perform whatever operations I want. But then as the user is going to type in that URL in its, in its browser, what's going to happen is that its TCP IP stack is going to send the DNS request to the DNS server configured on the PC. Let's say the DNS server is server A. So we're going to send the DNS request to server A asking who is www.xyz.com now if the attacker can actually take control of that of the dns service from that server what the attacker can do is make the dns server reply to a dns request about www.xyz.com with a uh, with the ip address which is going to take the user 
to the attacker's website, not to the real bank's website. So by using a DNS attack, the attackers can configure the, the, the DNS server in such a way that upon a DNS request to resolve xyz.com, the DNS server is going to reply that you find that 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 you are that you are well that host to the IP address of 1.2.3.4, for example, which this is not the address where the the bank hosts its real website. It's a faked. Um, it is the address where the attacker has published a web server which looks up to be legitimate because it's a copy paste of the real bank's web server so the user actually let's assume that the uh, the bank's web server resides in here on router 4 so let's say this is the real bank web server in here the real bank web server web server but the user never gets a chance to access that uh, that web server because DNS has returned an of IP address, which is going to direct the user to here, where this is 1.2.3.4, and it's a replica of the bank web server, so it looks identical to the bank's web server. Then the user is going to initiate a session to that replica, put in put in there its own credentials and then the attacker is going to get access to the user credentials and the attacker can use those credentials to actually log in in the name of the user to the real bank to the real bank web service and then do all kind of transactions from there so this is clearly clearly more sophisticated and it's going to this is clearly a very technical attack the farming attack which pretty much the, there's nothing that the user can do unfortunately because that that website for example so after the user is going to enter its credentials in the wrong website and is going to actually leak those its credentials to the attacker then the attacker can actually send back a message looking authoritative saying uh, uh, sorry wrong username and password or sorry service, service unavailable and then the user states if, if, if the web page if, if the web page returns a sorry service unavailable as the user puts in puts in its credentials then the user is going to be is going to is going to believe that hey the, my bank currently has a problem i'm going to come back later and the user doesn't realize that he actually leaked its username and password to the um, to the attacker. So then the attacker can log in uh, by using its credentials and basically um, doing all kinds of transactions in, in its name. It has also evolved to phone calls. It is called vishing. So uh, the same kind of uh, credential asking is done via phone or then to SMS messages, which is called a smishing. So like users get different various SMS messages uh, which look legitimate showing up from the bank where the bank where the attacker states something like uh, this is a basic security check we want to make sure that your, your, your account is st still functioning because we had a uh, incident in our network uh, please um, send us back the username and password or please log on to your account now by using this URL and they give to the user wrong URL so all those kind of things.